What's going on guys? So another week down in the books in the weekly rotation. Got a few new things to the collection that uh, was some first time wears for me. Actually, about half of the fragrances in this video, it was my first time giving full wears to. So as usual, a lot of variety here, but some stuff that kind of surprised me for the most part. And I really want to talk to you guys about it. It's week number 150. So stay tuned. <laughs> Starting off on Sunday, should be no surprise, this is going to be in the week of rotation, and of course starting the week out is my newest creation with Zaharoff called Evening Mystique. So for those of you that may have not heard anything about this fragrance just yet, a beautiful aromatic, very smoky, resinous iris fragrance, a little bit of clean patchouli in the dry down, light musk, and such amazing performer i mean i don't know what else to say as far as the performance is extremely long lasting has a great sillage pretty good projection in the first few hours it's a 25 percent parfum so the oil concentration is there it's deep dark and resinous notes so it wears a little bit heavy uh so the sillage is definitely on the thicker side it'll definitely linger when you walk away and you have a really nice scent cloud going for quite a long time beautiful fragrance it's available for pre-order now there's a link below for those of you that want to go ahead and check it out. But to start the week, during the day, with TLTG Reviews and Zaharoff Evening Mystique. Also on the box says, Business Over Pleasure, Act 2, because it is indeed a flanker to Business Over Pleasure. There are a few notes that tie it in together. But then when I got out the shower, I actually ended up using the shower gel because I bought this as a gift set. Um, it is from Diesel. We're talking about Spirit of the Brave. Fresh, green, a little minty green, honestly, from the cypress note. Powdery and sweet, like a tonka bean tone. Very lovely fragrance. Very underrated, cheap fragrance that nobody really talks about. I picked up this 50ml that came with a 50ml shower gel from Ross Dress for Less a while back. I don't remember exactly how long ago. It's not very recent, but it's not years ago either. It's quite lovely. Very simplistic, but it also really smells nice and doesn't smell like everything else and I think that's what I appreciate the most about it. The line as a whole, they're just really solid cheap fragrances. Sure, more on the synthetic side, but I have this, I have the original Only the Brave, I have Only the Brave High, I have Only the Brave Tattoo, and of the four that I have, nothing disappoints me, nothing comes across as mediocre to me. I don't think I think all of them are very good fragrances in their own right. So if you've maybe never checked out any of these diesel fragrances in the Only the Brave line, maybe because, let's say you think the bottle's super cheesy, which admittedly, yeah, it is. It's unique, but it's definitely cheesy. Uh, you're not going to spend much money online, and they're actually pretty decent scent profiles that aren't just direct copies of a bunch of different things. So it's been a little while since I wore it, but it was nice to get some life out of it. really enjoy the sprays. Out the shower, diesel, spirit of the brave. Moving into Monday, this is a new one to my collection. This is from the good folks at Blue Atlas, men's grooming brand. This is their first fragrance, and it's a fresh blue style fragrance that doesn't smell like all the rest because of this interesting, slightly unique peach apricot combo. This is called Atlantis from Blue Atlas. I just did a full review on this one. Looks like a Blue de Chanel bottle. Magnetic cap, outrageous atomizer. Fantastic pressurized and pressure sensitive so you can spray a little you can spray a lot it smells great like i said peach and apricot there's other citruses there's a little bit of a tart fruitiness here there's some light florals um it's violet and i believe iris is in here as well and they don't really take over the fragrance there's a light floral slight powdery tone but the citruses and the sweet fruity tone is what kind of stays until you transition into a more clean musky type of tone performance is pretty good for me on this one not a beast but definitely above average really enjoying this one I've been enjoying spending some time with this one uh, I didn't see where you could get samples online uh, from the company so I don't know how easy it would be to sample this goes for a hundred bucks retail um, it's definitely one that I would want to get my nose on if it sounds interesting definitely check out my full review I go into a little bit more detail than I am here right now but it's been a joy to wear for sure Versatile, everyday guy type of stuff. During the day, Blue Atlas, Atlantis. Then we got the shower. This one never seems to be anything but a joy to wear. This is Auro Chrome Pure. I've kind of exclusively been wearing this one out the shower since I got it. I don't think I've worn it casually even once. I mean, technically out the shower, lounging around. That is casual. It's a very casual setting, but 
this beautiful creamy citrus, a little kind of slightly bitter herbal tea type of smell. Just lovely stuff. I mean, not as clean and pure as the color scheme and the name would indicate, but it is a beautiful, super inoffensive uh, kind of twist on the DNA because it doesn't directly remind me of Chrome, but it also doesn't veer away from what Chrome's all about in the first place. Clean, inoffensive, mass appealing, fresh type of fragrance. This is definitely some people's favorites from what I've seen over the years as far as the Chrome line. And I mean, I can't knock it. Not my absolute favorite, but definitely one I enjoy wearing. Performance is decent. Nothing really above average or below average. Just kind of, you know, five, six hours type of stuff. Not a real strong projector. Kind of average stuff, basically. Out the shower. The lovely. Azaro Chrome Pure. Moving into Tuesday, I had just picked this one up at the rack stores recently. I wore it during the day. Ended up wanting to wear it out the shower also. This is Guess Seductive Ohm Red. I bought this one ounce bottle for $11.99. I was very intrigued by it. I bought it at a Ross Dress for Less. And it reminds me, I just can't pinpoint what of, of a certain fragrance. And I just, I still can't figure it out. It's been a, you know, handful of days since I wore it. Three, four days, something like that, close to a handful. And I just can't quite pinpoint what it smells like. It's very inviting, very fresh, a little spicy, fruity. It, like I said, I can't pinpoint what it is. It's a little woody in the backdrop. It's nothing complex. It's not some amazing fragrance that I think everybody should grab if they come across it at their local Ross Dress for Less, but it's decent. One of the better fragrances I've smelled in this price point. $11.99 for this 30 ml, admit, but it is a small bottle. It's only a 30 ml, but it was perfect for a blind buy for such a cheap guest fragrance to see what it was all about. For the most part, the, the Seductive Ohm line, pretty solid fragrances. As with the guest Man line, that seems to be my experience there as well. Solid, cheap fragrances. None of these are remarkable and amazing and must-haves, but for those on a really severe, low budget and they, can't, they don't want to or can't spend more than 20 bucks on a fragrance, it's hard to beat as long as you're willing to sacrifice some performance and maybe a little quality. Guess offers a lot of variety. Evening wear, daytime wear, cooler weather, warmer weather. They kind of have you covered, especially these rack stores for cheap. So definitely solid. It's a decent fragrance. I like this one. I enjoyed wearing it all day long. Guess Seductive Ohm Red. Moving into Wednesday, this was the other fragrance that I scooped up from Ross Dress for Less in the same haul as the Guess fragrance. This was a nostalgia pickup. The price was so good I couldn't pass it up because I've been debating on getting this one. I used to have a small bottle, so it's technically a rebuy, though it's been many years since I had that bottle. But we're talking about Ralph Lauren's Polo Double Black. The smell of the mid-2000s. This came out in like 05, 06 or something like that. It smells like that time frame. It's a product of that time. Think Rock Aware, Fat Farm, all the different, you know, more hip-hop oriented urban brands that were popular among that time that a lot of us were wearing that are in my age bracket. You know, when Polo and Tommy Hilfiger really weren't at the level they were before or currently, it was other brands were starting to take your Mark Echoes and such like that. Brands like that were starting to really take off, especially for polo shirts and such. And this reminds me of those times, man. The early to mid-2000s was a good time. We had some technology, but it didn't rule the world the way it does today. And uh, really good fragrance. Nothing special in performance. You get that mango hit at the top, that fruitiness. There's some spicy tone to it. It's warm. It's a little ambery. There's this coffee note in there. It's got an earthiness to it, but not a real dirty fragrance. But it's lovely for the little bit of time it's on your skin, for the little bit that I've worn it thus far since getting this. I clock it around like five hours on my skin. Nothing special, kind of in the average range, but after about an hour, it does sit pretty close to the skin, but it's, it's, it's a nostalgia pick for me. I'm so happy to have this. I love the way this one smells. Like I said, it's, I have fond memories of that time frame. It's just really, really good stuff. It's this, I had this when I was in my very early 20s, so very nostalgic pick for me. It's Polo Double Black. And then when I got out the shower, switched it up to something super fresh that seems to always make its way in the rotation. Ferrari Radiant Bergamot. Just good stuff. <sighs> Zesty green, juicy citrus, fresh greens, all that good stuff. 
I say it every week. I talk about it every week because it's in every single weekly rotation. At least for the recent memory, this has been in every time at least once. Because I just love wearing this fragrance. I have two bottles of it. This bottle has an air leak, so it'll spoil sooner than later. So I might as well just enjoy it. And that's what the hell I've been doing. You can still find this one in the sub $30 price point, even though all the Ferrari fragrances have been discontinued. This one can still be had very cheap. And if you like bergamot fragrances, no reason not to give it a try. As you can see, I love it because, I mean, I wear it at least once a week at the shower. Ferrari Radiant Bergamot. Moving into Thursday is a very new release from the house of Maison Crivelli. I've never tried anything outside of this fragrance from the house, but I feel like I started in a good spot because Ombre Chromatique is stunning. A gorgeous, smoky amber fragrance that I just did a full review on. Man, love this stuff. Sticks to my skin like glue. So good. Earthy tones, but not a dirty earthy tone. Has this herbal green feel without it overtaking the fragrance. Beautiful dose of incense in the top. And the benzoin resin that's used here has this dark, warm, sticky-like ambery feel to the scent profile. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful fragrance with lights out longevity, magical sillage, and kind of average to slightly above average projection, but it settles into that beautiful scent bubble of sillage that you get for a long, long time. It's a dense cloud. This is just beautiful. Beautiful fragrance that's worth sampling. I think the samples are like six bucks from Twisted Lily. Check out my full review. There's a 10% off code in there. Save your 60 cents off the $6 sample and try this fragrance if you're looking for a new magnificent amber fragrance for this you know, time of year that we're moving into the fall and winter seasons. Might want to check this one out. It's a delight for sure. Amber lovers need to try this. Maison Crevelli Ombre Chromatique. Then when I got the shower, it was time for a good shave. So I lathered up my Zaharoff Signature Citrine Shave Soap, used the aftershave splash after the fact, and gave myself a few sprays of the fragrance. Love having these layering combos of same scent multiple products. That's the layering combos I like to do. I know a lot of people like to blend their fragrances, mix you know, three sprays of this one, two sprays of that one, and get it down to a science you know, for what they like. And I can appreciate all that. That's not really my cup of tea. I like to pick a fragrance and stick with that one fragrance. That's where I like to do these shave sets, lotions, and so on that are that same scent profile or that exact same fragrance. Whereas here, it's the exact same thing. The, the oil in here is the oil in here in the shave soap. And it's just lovely. With the soap, it's more of a warm and sweet orange, very ambery. The base notes come out a bit more. You get a lot of the top notes with the aftershave splash, and of course with the fragrance, you get the full experience and the full range of notes, top, heart, and base. But out the shower, I had a good old shave, went with Zaharoff Signature Stream Shave Set and the fragrance. Moving into Friday was a 2022 release that got cheap really quick. I love its original, and I love this flanker. It is from Rochas, this is Rochas Slom. This is Aromatic Touch, the green flanker. Still got a nice hit of that juniper that the original's known for. But here you get a bunch of dense yet bright greens, a nice woody backbone. It's a lightly earthy fragrance that still maintains a lot of freshness, full of this aromatic tone for most of the life, hence the name Aromatic Touch. Beautiful stuff. I grabbed this from FragranceNet for 36 bucks, and it's a release that came out this year. I love when stuff like that happens because this fragrance smells nicer to me than a sub $40 price point for sure. This is just a beautiful fragrance if you're into dense greens. Aromatics and greens. It's beautiful. It's great for the fall as well. Early spring, all through the fall, and then the milder winter days. I'm sure this will do fine in the very cold. I haven't experienced that just yet because I just recently got it. And it hasn't gotten really cold yet. But for these mild fall days... This is a great fragrance. It really is. Hard to beat for the price point. It smells amazing. During the day, Aromatic Touch, Rochas Loam's newest flanker. Then we got up the shower. This was one that my buddy Jay over at Icon de Parfum sent me. Speaking of discontinued Ferrari fragrances, this is Leather Essence. It's a partial. Missing the cap. No big deal. I gave myself three around the neck, two on the forearms. This was last night. Very animalic. Rough and rugged, very edgy, a little on the synthetic side, sure. It's a Ferrari fragrance. It's not 
high level niche, but ambery, warm, spicy, very edgy and animalic. Not typically something I like to spray out the shower. But I was vibing with this one last night. Because like I said, at the recording of this, I wore this last night. It's good stuff. I'm so glad that Jay sent this my way. I've really, really been digging this one. Enjoying it. It's very high priced on eBay now that it's discontinued. You're looking in the mid-100s just to secure a bottle. I wouldn't go after it when it used to be 30 or 40 bucks. I wouldn't necessarily go after it because if you're looking for a quality leather... This isn't a quality leather type of fragrance, but it does smell really good for being on the synthetic side. A joy to have, I have to admit, it's definitely been a joy to have. And at the shower, ended up rocking Ferrari Leather Essence. Finally on Saturday, what's on my skin right now? Been talking a lot about this line recently. Made me want to go back to the Intense Flanker that I have not worn in quite some time. We're talking about Ralph Lauren's Polo Red Intense. So I had two, two polo fragrances this week. This one, not quite the blast from the past as double black, but beautiful stuff. This was a hype beast at one point. Fruity, sweet, beautiful cranberry and robust coffee. That's what it's most known for. It does get sweeter in the dry down. This is definitely a sweet coffee fragrance. It's not too heavy on the coffee. Very mass appealing. Uh, on the synthetic side, as you would expect, it is a Ralph Lauren Polo fragrance, but super enjoyable. Much more on the youthful side. I would say Polo Red Extreme is a little bit more grown up and mature, uh, but still quite playful in its own right because it's still very sweet even though it's more robust and darker overall, much richer fragrance than this. This is some good stuff. I haven't worn it in a long time. I, th I believe this one's discontinued and because uh, they've put they put a decent amount of flankers out in the Polo Red line over the last few years. This one came out in like 2015 or something like that. And I scooped up this 75 ml for 40 bucks, I want to say. From a Marshalls a few years ago, or a hand, a few years ago, yeah, three, four years ago, something like that. And there was a time when I was spraying this one pretty heavily. There's a decent little dent in this bottle. It's not quite halfway down, but like a third of the bottle is missing. But it's good stuff. It's been a while since I wore it. It was nice to revisit it. Performance is great without being super loud and super long lasting. It's definitely above average. It's what you would at least hope for most of the time with something with the name Intense. And it definitely delivers during the day. Polo Red Intense from Ralph Lauren. Then when I get out the shower this evening, I've already picked my weapon of choice. I am going to go with Sean John I Am King. I haven't wore this one in a little while. Beautiful, like, passion fruit, dragon fruit type of fruity sweetness. On the weak side of performance, but the scent is amazing. It's a great refresher out the shower. Fruity, fresh, sweet, slightly unique because it's not your typical fruity freshness. Like I said, I don't remember if it's passion fruit or dragon fruit. It's something like that that gives this unique fruity, sweet smell on the top. Just a beautiful fragrance. You can get this one pretty cheap as long as you're okay with weak performance because I always have uses for these great smelling, weak performing, cheaper fragrances. This is all of those things I just mentioned. So when I take a shower in a little while, I'll be spraying Sean John, I am king. Well, that was this week's rotation. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What did you guys wear this week? My favorite comments of the week to read. I'd love to know what your rotation looked like. Definitely put it down in the comments. Did you happen to wear anything that I wore this week by chance? You never know. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on anything I wore, and give it a spray now, I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.